Here we have our new Spark Fun box that just arrived. It is amazing how much money can go in such a small little box. Let's see, let's open her up and see what we got. Packaging! Wow, that's really worth the money. Yes, sir. A bit of packaging. And let's make sure that's all that is. Okay. Let's see, we've got that. That's what we got. <laughs> I got the XBs in the center. They're really small. Got two of those. I had another GPS unit like the one I used for my data logger. I just went ahead and got the same kind because uh, that's what I'm familiar with and it really works really well. And I got a USB breakout board for the XB. This allows for the programming of them. You can use two of them right out of the box. And they'll communicate with each other automatically. But if you want to make a network of them where you have several talking to one, you got to sign them node IDs and that sort of thing. And that's where that guy comes in. You hook them up to your computer through the USB port and then you can configure the XP the way you need it. And the other breakout board is just a basic board and all it does is it changes the pinout of the XP to make it more breadboard friendly. They have a different pinout than we'll, go, we'll actually go into a breadboard. And that just does that. Okay. The SparkFun breakout board breaks out all the pins of the XB and converts them into a standard format that fits into the regular uh, breadboards because the pitch on these was too small. Uh, but I only need four. The VCC, the D out, D in, and ground. So what I'm thinking about doing is turning it into a SIP socket by putting the pins out the bottom of just the four pins I need so the thing just sets into a breadboard upright and doesn't take up as much space while I'm uh, trying to figure these things out and learn how they work. We will also do the same thing with the GPS module. It's got four pads you got a solder to and we can put a pins there and that way we can breadboard it easily. It's also, I think, only has four pins it needs to, a ground, power, a receive, and a uh, transmit pin, pretty much just like the uh, XB. To aid my memory, I'm going to try to wire up the XB pins the same as the GPS pins, which would be... ground, transmission line, receiving line, power. In the forums on Parallax's website is a how-to on how to set up and work the uh, XP modules. It's in, where is it? <laughs> it's in the wireless section. And wireless index. And it's a pretty in depth tutorial, six chapters. Okay, the tutorial starts out by putting one of your XP's into loopback mode. And let me reverse my mindset here. This is ground on this side. Power is right here. And to put it in loopback mode, you just do a, you just connect the uh, transmission and receiving lines. So whatever this radio receives it just transmits right back out again 
And then we take the other module that is on the USB board and we hook that one into the computer. Now we open up the XCTU program, which allows us to communicate with the USB attached XB. Uh, we'll do a test query to see if it's up and going. And it gives us the modem type and the ID and serial number for it, so we're good to go. We'll do a range test to see uh, how strong a signal we're getting between the two, which are right now 8 inches apart, so it should be a pretty good signal. 100% and packets are coming in good. Okay, so now we can go to the terminal tab. Delete what I already had up there. Just clear it. Yes, we're right there. Clear screen. Okay, so we can assemble packet. Uh, we'll do the standard hello world. And then we'll tell the XB to send it out. Now, because the other XB is in loop mode, it's just going to send back the message to me. Let's put a little enter in there. Send data. Okay, the blue up here, that's what I sent. And the red is what got sent back to me from the other XB. In the next video dealing with the Iron Bowl project, we're going to look at the objects needed to get the GPS data. And we will also look on how you can send data serially over the XBs.